Why the painting The Grand Odalisk reaps a lot of criticism. La Grand Odalisk is an oil painting of 1814 by Gino Guse Dominique Angra depicting an odalisk, or concubine. Jean Auguste Dominique Angra was a French neoclassical painter. August 29, 1780, January 14, 1867. Angra was profoundly influenced by past artistic traditions and aspired to become the guardian of academic orthodoxy against the ascendant Romantic style. Although he considered himself a painter of history in the tradition of Nicolas Poussin and Jacques-Louis David, it is his portraits, both painted and drawn, that are recognized as his greatest legacy. His expressive distortions of form and space made him an important precursor of modern art, influencing Picasso, Matisse and other modernists. Born into a modest family in Montauban, he traveled to Paris to study in the studio of David. In 1802 he made his salon debut, and won the Prix de Rome for his painting The Ambassadors of Agamemnon in the Tent of Achilles. By the time he departed in 1806 for his residency in Rome, his style, revealing his close study of Italian and Flemish Renaissance masters, was fully developed, and would change little for the rest of his life. While working in Rome and subsequently Florence from 1806 to 1824, he regularly sent paintings to the Paris Salon, where they were faulted by critics who found his style bizarre and archaic. He received few commissions during this period for the history paintings he aspired to paint, but was able to support himself and his wife as a portrait painter and draftsman. He was finally recognized at the Salon in 1824, when his Rapalesque painting, The Vow of Louis XIII, was met with acclaim, and Anger was acknowledged as the leader of the neoclassical school in France. Although the income from commissions for history paintings allowed him to paint fewer portraits, his portrait of Monsieur Burden marked his next popular success in 1833. The following year, his indignation at the harsh criticism of his ambitious composition The Martyrdom of Saint Symphorian caused him to return to Italy, where he assumed directorship of the French Academy in Rome in 1835. In his later years he painted new versions of many of his earlier compositions, a series of designs for stained glass windows, several important portraits of women, and the Turkish bath. The last of his several Orientalist paintings of the female nude, which he finished at the age of 83. And, what about the Grand Odalisk? Did the artist make a mistake? In 1814 artist Jean-Auguste Dominique Angra was commissioned the Grand Odalisk by Caroline, Napoleon Bonaparte's sister. The woman had married Marshal Joachim Morat, become King of Naples in 1808, and wanted the painting matched another painting by Angra portraying a nude sleeping woman. The painting was presented at the Salon of 1819 and received much criticism. Stemming from the initial criticism the painting received, the figure in Grand Odalisk is thought to be drawn with two or three vertebrae too many. The left odalisk arm is shorter than the right. The study concluded that the digit is longer by five rather than two or three vertebrae and that excess affects the length of the pelvis and lower back, not just the lumbar region. Another critic said in addition the odalisk shouldn't be nude because odalisks are always dressed inside the harem. One critic remarked that the work had neither bones nor muscle, neither blood, nor life, nor relief, 
indeed nothing that constitutes imitation. Critics at the time believed the elongations to be errors on the part of Angra. Critics viewed Angra as a rebel against the contemporary style of form and content. How did Angra answer the criticism? And what is the real purpose? Angra drew upon works such as Dresden Venus by Giorgione, and Titian's Venus of Urbino as inspiration for his reclining nude figure. Though the actual pose of a reclining figure looking back over her shoulder is directly drawn from the 1800 portrait of Madame Recamier by Jacques-Louis David, Angra portrays a concubine in languid pose as seen from behind with distorted proportions. The small head, elongated limbs, Influences from Madonna with the long neck was also famous for anatomical distortion. And cool color scheme all reveal influences from mannerists. Angra instead favored long lines to convey curvature and sensuality, as well as abundant, even light to tone down the volume. Another interpretation of this painting suggests that since the duty of some concubines was merely to satisfy the carnal pleasures of the Sultan, this elongation of her pelvic area may have been a symbolic distortion by Angra. While this may represent sensuous feminine beauty. Her gaze, on the other hand, has been said to reflect a complex psychological. In addition, the distance between her gaze and her pelvic region may be a physical representation of the depth of thought and complex emotions of a woman's thoughts and feelings. The whole scene is occupied by her body and only the feather fan. The turban she wears on her head and few other details give us information about her provenance from an oriental country. Along the right side of the composition we see a hookah, a kind of pipe that was used for opium. Signifies the dark side of concubine life. Recent studies have shown that the elongation is a deliberate distortion and that Angra did it for reasons other than technical faults but on purpose. And in fact many artists are inspired by his style. His expressive distortions of form and space made him an important precursor of modern art, influencing Picasso, Matisse, and other modernists. Thank you for watching.